When it becomes time for your baby to begin to feed, a lot of decisions will be asked of you. Early feeds, called trophic feeds, are sometimes started right after birth. What's important for you to remember is that as the baby's gut develops in utero, it has always, always had fluid in it. That fluid is called trophic, and what we mean by that, it helps to grow and develop the baby's gut. When the baby's in utero, that's amniotic fluid. After the baby is born, the first fluid that mom makes for the baby is called colostrum. We've done an incredible amount of research lately about the importance of colostrum feedings, especially in preterm babies. One of the unique qualities about colostrum is that it's full of antioxidants. And your baby's transition from in utero to extra utero involves the production of something we call oxidative stress. It has to do with the changing from the environment in utero to extra uterine life, especially around oxygen. Antioxidants are the way to treat that. And the best way to treat that is by providing your colostrum for your baby. Colostrum can be hand expressed by the mother, brought to the nursery, never, never frozen, always fresh, and given to the baby in very small amounts. Even the sickest of babies, babies on ventilators, it has been shown that it can safely be given to them by gently putting it in the back of their throat and allowing them to swallow it and be absorbed. After that, as the baby begins to improve, we begin to look at starting something called enteral feeds. Enteral feeds is a phrase you'll hear in the nursery, and it just means that we put the food in the baby's belly and in their gut, and they absorb it from there just as they will the rest of their lives. The best source of enteral feeding for your baby is your breast milk. Breast milk is an amazing substance. We call it a, a biological wonder sometimes. It's nature's way of providing not only great nutrition in the forms of protein, fats, and carbohydrates, but a tremendous amount of immune and growth factors that help your baby's organs develop and can prevent infection through the whole first year of life. So we absolutely encourage you to be willing to pump and provide your milk for your baby. Your milk is unique because it exclusively has your antibodies in it. Antibodies that your body has made over time to infections that you've had, vaccinations that you've received, and it uniquely complements your baby because your baby is yours. So we encourage mom's milk first. After that, especially if you're having difficulty maintaining your milk volume, we encourage a couple of activities. One, if the lactation consultant in the NICU has not found you, and she almost always has, seek her out for her expertise in maintaining your milk volume. You'll be asked to pump frequently, every three hours or so. You're, you're mimicking what your baby would do if your baby were at breast. The emptying of your breast by pumping or feeding encourages further milk production and increasing volume. The lactation and neonatal nursing team will talk to you about how to use a pump, <clears throat> how to store the milk, how to identify the milk and keep it frozen and brought into the nursery. When at all possible, we like to use fresh milk first because some loss of those factors takes place whenever the milk is frozen and then warmed again. So you'll be encouraged to bring your milk to the nursery. If it's fresh, we'll use it immediately if the baby is feeding. If not, we'll freeze it and then warm it and use it as your baby's feeding volume increases.